Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Suspense. The adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Dragnet. And now, Gangbusters. Welcome to the Film Detective Podcast, where we bring you theater of the mind programming from the golden age of radio. I'm your host, Carl Amari. This time, it's a radio adventure of the Cisco Kid and Poncho, his loyal companion from 1953. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hollywood's Golden Age, where Betty Davis, Jimmy Stewart, and Cary Grant ruled the screen. That's what I said. The whole front page out. Oh, never mind the European war. We got something a whole lot bigger than that. From silence to the 60s, we're bringing you a new way to enjoy old favorites. Ah, oh, there you are. It's all classics, and it's all right here on The Film Detective. O. Henry's outlaw, the Cisco Kid, followed a trail that led sometimes to adventure, often to danger, and always to beautiful senoritas. On the silver screen, the Cisco Kid was a sensation. On radio, his bandit characteristics were toned down for a younger audience. Riding through the Tex-Mex borderlands, the Cisco Kid dispensed justice in the manner of a Mexican Robin Hood. Like the English outlaw, the kind-hearted champion of the poor and downtrodden, aimed to right wrongs and restore law and order. The kid's cheerful, rotund sidekick, Pancho, was a master of the bullwhip and a hilarious misuser and mangler of the English language. The Cisco Kid was first broadcast from the studios of New York City in 1942, with Jackson Beck playing the title role. The Cisco Kid's second incarnation in 1946 starred Jack Mather and Harry Lang, and proved not only more popular, but also a landmark in radio broadcasting. Between 1946 and 1956, airing longer through syndication, a total of 636 episodes were produced. The Cisco Kid's audience share was as big as that of The Lone Ranger and Hopalong Cassidy. Time now for Night of the Fire, starring Jack Mather, with Mel Blanc as Poncho, here's the Cisco Kid. Here's adventure. Here's romance. Here's the famous Robin Hood of the Old West. Cisco, the sheriff, he is getting closer. This way, Pacho, Romano. The Cisco Kid. Do you ever leave the house with just half a breakfast? Then you could run the risk of being just half as efficient all day. Because doctors agree, you, mom, the kids, everybody needs a good breakfast. For a good breakfast means a good morning. And everybody says a good breakfast ought to include several golden toasted slices of... Tut, tut, nothing but butternut bread. Yes, good butternut bread supplies that flavor essential to a good breakfast. Supplies that nutrition, essential to face a long day of work at the office, the factory, at school, or around the house. And who can think of an easier way to take in that nutrition than the rich golden goodness of golden brown slices of butternut toast? Remember, never leave the house with just half a breakfast. Have a good breakfast for a good morning, a good day all day, every day. Have plenty of toasted butternut bread. Now, the Cisco Kid in our gripping story, The Night of the Fire. In the days of the stagecoach and the false front store, the town of Pierce, Arizona, down in the rugged Cochise country, saw its share of gunmen and killers. The town would have been astounded to learn that worse than the worst of these was the slim, blue-eyed youth known as Joe Beaver. For Joe Beaver, who worked as clerk in the office of old Sheriff Buck Mason, was a timid-seeming kid, 
shunning such things as horses and guns. But more and more often, Sheriff Mason took Joe's advice. As our story opens, it's early evening of a windy night. About to leave the office and go home, the sheriff says, Well, uh, what do you think, Joe? Will that firebug hit tonight? I don't know, Sheriff. Maybe. Strong wind blowing tonight. Yeah, that's just the kind of a night he's picked twice before. Wind builds up a good fire, draws everybody in town, then the scoundrel commits his robbery. You might send for the Cisco kid, Sheriff. I hear he's down this way. Cisco? Now look, Joe, you know how I feel about that rascalian. Why, well, I, I wouldn't trust a Cisco kid. Just what he... I mean. Get him here by asking his help, then watch him close. Say, he, he might be the one. He that... might be. Now you go on home, Sheriff. You're tired. I'll walk around the street and keep my eyes and ears open. Yeah, you ought to learn to ride, Joe. Yeah, get around faster. Horses make me nervous. Good night, Sheriff. I'll come and get you if anything goes wrong. You're a good boy, Joe. Good night. <laughs> the old fool. Ollie, you out there? Yeah, out behind the corral, Joe. Got the horses and the coal oil? Sure have. Be right with you as soon as I lock up. We'll set fire to this old warehouse, Oli. Oh. Whoa, whoa. <clears throat> what place we holding up tonight, Joe? The store. Up the other end of the street. Old man hadn't sold it this afternoon for $4,000 cash. He's moving out of the store tomorrow. The money in the store? Yeah. Hand me that coal oil. Uh, here it is. I... Uh, uh, hey, you don't have to spill it all over me. I didn't mean to, Joe. I stumbled. Well, be careful. Yeah. As soon as this gets going, good Oli, we'll ride for the store the back way, fast as our horses can go. Remember, keep your neckerchief up over your face. Uh, I suppose I gotta go back into that blasted mine tunnel afterwards, huh? That's our hideout, Ollie. But it won't be for much longer. One good job after this one, and we'll head east and have some fun. Now I'll touch this off. Stand back. Yeah. Yeah, ain't gonna take but a minute for that fire to get going. We better start right now. Come on. Right. Get up yeah. there! Get up there! Yeah. Look back there, Joe. She sure is blazing up beautiful. Yeah. There's some hombres over there in the street. Hey, look at them run like a bunch of sheep. Right in behind the store, Oli. Right. Oh! There goes the hombres who, who was in the store there. Let's go. Hey, I can sure use some of that 4,000. Hand over that money, Hatton. Be quick. Hand over. Why, you bandits, I'll hand over nothing as long as I can aim this gun. Nice work, Ole. That finishes him. You clean out the cash drawer. Yeah. I'll go get the 4,000. Sheriff said he kept it in a poke under his mattress. And then you get back to the tunnel, and I'll go after the sheriff. <laughs> But Cisco Sheriff Buck Mason, he never like us. Why he send for us to help him? I do not understand it either, Pancho, but apparently the sheriff sent for us in good faith. Well, anyway, the town of Pierce looks about the same as it used to. See, there is the store and the harness shop and the express company office and the... Hey, look, Pancho. There's the sheriff's brother, Ed Mason, just coming out of the express company. Well, he still work there, no? So it would seem. He's a friend of ours, even if his brother is not. Let us go greet him. Go the Oh, hold on. Senor Ed Mason! Yeah, we come to see you, senor. Well, doggone. I'll be a buffalo's playmate if it ain't the Ciso kid and Pancho. Yeah, what brings you to Pierce? Your brother brings us here, senor. We do not know why. Well, I think I know. There's been three bad fires and robberies and one murder here within the past six months. Buck's too old to figure things out the way he used to. So he must have sent for you two to help him out. Has he any deputy, senor Ed? No, no, just got a milk and water squirt of a kid over in his office. Kid named Joe Beaver. I wouldn't want him around me. Those fires, uh, were they set? Don't seem to be any doubt about it, Cisco. They were set. Gracias for the information. 
We will see you later, senor. Right now, Pancho, let us go to the sheriff's office. Yeah, call around again, Slipscan. Si, senor. Oh, fires and robberies and murders, Cisco. That's not good. The question is, is there any connection between the three? Well, look, Cisco, there's Sheriff Mason. He just come out of his office. He look a lot older than when we last here. The young man with him is probably Joe Beaver. Oh, uh, you What is this, senor sheriff? Uh, you sent for us, or we are here, oh, sheriff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cisco and his partner, huh? <laughs> this boy here is Joe Beaver. Howdy. Greetings to you, Joe. Hola. Now the great Cisco kid's here, I reckon your troubles are over, Sheriff. Gracias for the compliment, Nino. If a compliment it is. Can you tell us now what you want of us, Sheriff? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little later on, Cisco. I most always take a little siesta at this time of day. I'm late getting home. Uh, call back here about uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. You tend to things, Joe. Sure will, Sheriff. See you two later. Well, that's not a very good welcome, Cisco. I expected nothing more from the sheriff. Come on, amigo. What do you think of that niño? Well, he's shifty of eye and somewhat sullen. Also, did you notice that big stain on his coat, Pancho? Well, Pancho not notice that, Cisco. It looked very much like a stain made by coal oil. Of course, that might have no connection with the fire Senor Ed mentioned. Just the same, we will keep an eye on that Joe Beaver. Ollie? Yeah, I'm back here in the tunnel. Hey, look, Joe, I ain't gonna stay hid out in this blasted tunnel anymore, see? It's cold and damp. Keep and... your shirt on, Ollie. Huh? We're gonna finish things up tonight. What do you mean? Remember my telling you the sheriff sent for the Cisco kid? On my say so? Yeah. Well, Cisco's in town. Him and his partner both. Well, what of it? This afternoon, about three o'clock, they're gonna talk with the sheriff. While they're in the office, I'm going to plant about $10 in those crumpled old bills of Hatton's in Cisco's saddlebag. Also, a pad of sale slips with Hatton's name on it. Oh, so the sheriff will think Cisco committed that murder, huh? Exactly. <sighs> and tonight's the night when a shipment of gold is going out of the express company office by stagecoach. $10,000. That's worth going after, Joe. We're going after it. Ed Mason said he wanted the sheriff to name a shotgun messenger to ride the stagecoach. But I'll just forget to tell the sheriff about it. <laughs> uh, so you're going to have the Cisco kid and his partner heaved into jail. So they'll be locked up good and secure while you and me take out after that gold on the stagecoach, Ollie. Hey, hey, hey. You figured on setting a fire anywhere to draw the people? You bet I am. Oh, what place you're going to set a fire? <laughs> the jail. I do not like all these questions, senor sheriff. Pancho and I came here to your office to get information. All you have done is to ask questions. See, anybody think maybe you and me said the fires and rob and kill, Cisco? Now, all I want to know is where you two were at the time of the last fire here. That's the night Jim Hatton was murdered. I have already told you we were in Tombstone that night. I suppose you can prove that, Cisco. Oh, let us get out of here, Pancho. Seems the sheriff has no information for us. Uh, Pancho not want to stay in this town some more anyway. Now, what is the matter with Diablo? What are you doing around my horse, Joe Beaver? Uh, just looking over your outfit, Cisco. Ain't that all right? See? But do not get too close to Diablo. He does not like strangers. You might get badly bitten. I'll keep away from him. You ain't got to get huffy about my question, Cisco. But you ain't above suspicion, you know. You want us to help you, Senor Sheriff? We'll be glad to do our best. Cisco always find the bandidos too, Sheriff. If we hear nothing from you within the hour, we will know you do not want our help. And we will ride out of the town, no? We'll be over at the express company office. We'll lead our horses, Pancho. There's only a few steps over to the express company si, office. Cisco. Let me Pancho angry, Cisco. Let Sheriff think we the bandidos. <laughs> I do not think we have to worry about being arrested, Chico. Oh, look, Cisco. Joe Beaver come out of the sheriff's office quick, quick. He run over towards the cafe. Well, let him run. That is nothing to us. Well, you seem like a busy man this afternoon, Senor Ed. Yeah, I've been pretty busy, Cisco. You just come over from Buck's office, didn't you? See? Si. Did he say anything about a sign a shotgun messenger to the night stagecoach? He said nothing to me. Not say nothing to Pancho, neither. 
Last I told Joe Beaver and the kids said you'd tell Buck, sure. Got a load of gold going out on that stagecoach tonight. And... Well, maybe Joe Beaver, he for, forget to tell his sheriff, Senor. Well, likely Buck has forgot about him. Well, I'll write shotgun message myself. I ain't going to beg Buck to assign one. Oh, here come the sheriff, and here come Joe Beaver from the cafe with a bunch of hombres. Well, let us go out and see and see what the trouble is. There's the two killers. Well, well my man, hombres, what is this all about? Oh, not look at us when you say killers, Nino. Uh, just a minute, just a minute, boys. I have a look in Cisco's saddlebag. Diablo, get to. Yeah, reckon you was right, Joe. These bills look just like the sort of money he hadn't kept in the cash box. Here's one a uh, hat and sail slip pads. Well, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, how do you how do those get into Cisco's saddlebag? I think I know, Pancho. So that is why you were looking over my outfit, Beaver. In order to plant those things in my saddlebag. You're crazy, Cisco. So this is the put up job. Cisco, you and your partner under arrest. Now, just a minute, Buck. Now, you keep out of this, Ed. Will you come with me peaceably, Cisco? If I can question that young coyote, Joe Beaver, see, I will go peaceably. We'll take no chances, Sheriff. Grab them two killers, boys. Rush them. Very well, hombres. You want to fight? You want to get a fight? But the odds are heavily against Cisco and Pancho. In just a moment, we'll return to the Cisco Kid. Two more for dinner, and it's already 5.30. Has that ever happened to you? Does it do things to those best laid plans? Well, it doesn't have to. Not when you let good butternut bread solve the problem. You can use butternut to stretch the supply of whatever you were already planning to serve. Or let butternut be the basis of an entirely different, quickly prepared dinner, like a cream dish, or Welch rarebit, or toasted company-style sandwiches. All of them made with butternut toast, and all of them extra good, because they're made with butternut. You see, butternut has a flavor all its own that actually adds to the flavor of other foods, has a freshness and a goodness that comes to the rescue of many a hurry-up dinner. So always be ready for the unexpected. Always keep a loaf of butternut bread fresh and handy. When you buy bread, remember... Tut, tut, nothing but butternut bread. Good butternut bread. Let the blue and white check gingham wrapper with a picture of quality be your buying guide. Now back to the Cisco Kid in our gripping story, The Night of the Fire. When Cisco and Pancho arrived in Pierce, Arizona, they found that old Sheriff Buck Mason did not want any help solving a recent series of fires, robberies, and a murder, as his message had indicated. Instead, the sheriff insisted on looking in Cisco's saddlebags. Finding some money and a pad of sales slips marked with the name of the storekeeper who had been murdered, the sheriff told Cisco and Pancho they were under arrest, whereupon the sheriff's clerk, Joe Beaver, ordered the angry townspeople to grab our friends. Now... Give them as good as they send, Pancho! Oh, Pancho, do as well as Pancho can, Cisco! Oh, but, but, aye! It's too many for Pancho! Oh. That's one of them down! Now get that Cisco kid! Come on, get it! I am willing, Sheriff, but these hombres do not seem to be... Rush him, boys! That's the stuff! Santa, they come like a swarm of bees from all sides! I'll get him! Now! Oh! There wasn't no need of all that fighting, Joe. However, it made sure of them. Yeah, you're making a big mistake arresting them two, Buck. I bet my last nickel they're innocent. Instead, you better question us here pipsqueak. Pipsqueak, is it? I'll remember that, Mason. Keep your remarks to yourself, Ed. All right, boys. Give me a hand getting Cisco and his partner to jail. All right, you'll be glad. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, is that you, Joe? Yeah. Mighty dark in this dry wash out behind the jail, Ollie. Too blame dark. <laughs> 
Can't see nothing. Well, the moon will be up pretty quick. Then we can see good. Hey, stagecoach getting ready to go out? Yeah. I sneaked up behind that fence alongside the express company office and listened. Ed Mason is going to ride shotgun messenger. That suits me good. Oh, going to get him, huh? If it's the last thing I do. He called me a pipsqueak. You'll never call anybody else that. What do we do first? We set fire to the jail, same as I told you. It's just dry wood. It'll burn mighty quick. <laughs> and I don't believe Cisco and his partner can get out. <laughs> yes. uh, that suits me if they don't. Then we follow the Twin Forks Road. It's a shortcut to the corners. And when the stagecoach slows down to go up the hill, you and I'll be waiting for it, Ole. Pancho, I promise you this. If I ever get my hands on that Joe Beaver hombre, I will make him wish he had never been born. Yeah, not can get your hands on him from this uh, jail, Cisco. Oh, 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 here, here comes the sheriff now, Cisco. Are you two ready to confess yet? We have nothing to confess, Senor Sheriff. Well, that stuff was put into Cisco's saddlebag, Sheriff. Oh, sure, sure. Ain't no doubt. <laughs> I know blame well you're guilty of sin. Sheriff, let us out of this cell. We will sit down and talk this over in comfort. I am sure Pancho and I can convince you we are not guilty. Pancho like to be sure, too, but Pancho not sure. What do you say, Sheriff? No. Guess I can let you out of there as long as I don't give your guns back. <clears throat> I'll get the keys. Well, that'd be a lot better. And now if you have some food for us, too. Uh, Pancho's so hungry, the back of his shirt is he's just barely behind Pancho's stomach. <laughs> I want your sworn word. You won't try to get away if I let you out. No, Sheriff, I will not give you my word. Pancho not can give you the word, neither. Well, then that settles that. You'll stay right there. Now, first of all, what did you do with the rest of that money you stole from Hatton? I tell you, we did not steal it. Now, who's that? Oh, stagecoach driver. All right, come on, Cisco. Uh, what did you do with that money? How many times Cisco have to tell you, Sheriff? Momento, Pancho. Sheriff, before that stagecoach leaves, let me ask you this. Did you get your brother's message about assigning a shotgun messenger to the stagecoach? For the night's run, Cisco? See? Well, now... I don't recall I did. No, no, of course I didn't. Ted and I don't get along too well, but I'd I'd furnish him a shotgun messenger if he wanted one. Then you had better hurry and talk with him before the stagecoach leaves. Now, just what kind of monkey business is this? Yeah, yeah. It is no monkey business. He told that Joe Beaver hombre to be sure and tell you. Well, there the stagecoach goes, Sheriff. You better hurry and stop it, no? no I don't know. I, uh, he, he say, better go and see if you're telling the truth. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hey, driver! Pancho, when you were knocked down during that fight, you bent one of your spurs and almost broke it off. See, si, si, Now hold up your foot quickly. Here, I will finish the job. This length of spur is just what I want. There. Now I'll tie it to the end of my neckerchief. Cisco, you feel all right? See, Pancho, if I can toss this spur as far as those keys on the desk, perhaps I can catch the key ring in the spur. Then we can get out of here. You get your key ring, Cisco? Careful now, no? See, si, see. Si. Now to give the neckerchief a quick yank. <laughs> bueno, bueno. Now reach to the bars, Pancho. See if you can get those keys. Pancho, get them, Cisco. Bueno, here. Give them to me. I... Pancho, do you smell smoke? Si, Cisco. Not very much, though. There's no matter. Uh, this one looks as if it might fit. <clears throat> Blast it all. They didn't hear me. Chased them down the road, too. Now, where was we? we uh, uh, hey! Hey, what you doing? Getting out of this cell, Sheriff. Hey, you get back in there. I'll shoot you. are not going to have the chance, Sheriff. I'll take a gun. Uh, uh, shoot us. Easy, Sheriff. Do not want to have to hurt you. Well, Pancho, get our guns from your rack, Cisco. See, Pancho? Mother of me, what is that smoke? Oh, oh, now it gets strong, Cisco. Scott, look! Fire! Fire eating right through the wall. Oh, right in that cell where Cisco and Pancho was. Another fire, another crime. Cisco, the stagecoach, the gold. Exactly, Pancho. Things are beginning to fall into place now. The spot of coal oil on that young coyote's coat. Those things in my saddlebag. The message you did not receive, Sheriff. Come on, Pancho. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, you got to help me fight this fire. No, Sheriff. Another murder may be planned. Human life is more important than any building. Let us get to our horses, Pancho, as fast as we can. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, we can see a lot better now. The moon's out, Joe. Yeah. We're here ahead of that stagecoach, too. Oh, uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, Hand me that rifle, Ole. Uh, I get these horses back in the brush and out of sight. Uh, right away, Joe. I'll make sure this rifle's loaded. You reckon it'll be all right here. Any sign of the stagecoach, Joe? No, not yet. Hold on. That's it now. Come on, Ole. Let's get out of sight. There he is. A cold cat. Who? Ed Mason. Up front with the driver. Got a shotgun, but it won't do him any good. I'll draw a bead right in the middle of his shirt. Make it good, Joe. I'll make it good. Don't worry. You get ready to grab that lead horse. I'm ready. Right in the middle. That white shirt. Joe! Joe, look out! Drop that rifle one. Get up! Go, oh, blazes! Shoot the rifle right out from his hand. Whatever. Ho, ho! Oh, hold on, hold on. Thunder, whoa, hold on. I thought we might catch up with you, Joe Beaver. You'll never get me, Cisco. Stop him, Oli. Oh, Joe Beaver, run for his horse. He's off. No, no, you don't, Omri. I do not know who you are, Omri. But you are in very bad company. Get out, back. Get out, So, that is your game. We will see. Up, come here. Oh, yeah. What's up, I hope in this bandido, Cisco? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cisco. Pass the Diablo. Come on there. Yeah. Pass the. Ah. Now uh, we are painting. Pass the. Ah. Oh, yeah. Get it back. Get back, Cisco. That is just what I'm not going to do, Pantero. All right, come down off that horse. And... Ah. 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 It is time you were brought to justice. Ah. You can't do it, Cisco. <laughs> I intend to do it, Joe Beaver. Yes. Starting right this moment. Ah. Oh, 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 you, you see, Sheriff, that bandido on the ground, you see? That is a Joe Beaver hombre. I'll have a look. I... Uh, well, Sheriff, greetings. Tell me, did you save the jail? Save it? No. Huh. Had too good a start. As soon as I saw it was a goner, I rounded up a posse and lit out for here. Say, by Judas, it is Joe, ain't it, huh? Never would have believed it. Yeah? Well, what are you going to do about it? You know the answer, Joe. Just one word. Prison. <laughs> now you're talking, Buck. Well, I've been wrong, Ed. Might as well admit it. Cisco, I'm much obliged to you. Glad to help, Senor Sheriff. You know, any of us can be wrong. It takes a man to admit it, as you have done. I'll be happy to shake your hand. Uh- after you shake the hand of your brother, Ed. Yeah. And you know what, Cisco? That's going to be right now. Si, Pancho? Oh, you know, Joe Beaver, that, that li- little niño, he, he, he was a real tough guy. He very tough and, and, and a very bad hombre, too. Oh, uh, one of the worst I ever saw, si, Pancho. And just a little guy, too. Si. You know, most banditos seem to be a little bit repentant, at least. That is, after they are caught. But not that Joe Beaver. Oh, no, no, not Joe Beaver. He, he, he just stay mad, no? Si. And defiant. Well, let him be defiant, where he and the other one are. He can hurt no one from that jail. See, he not hurt nobody from there. Oh, Cisco. That, that was a real fine party the people of Pierce, they give to us. What do you think, oh, 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 Cisco? Very fine party, Pancho. Yeah, a big banquet and... And lots of food and dancing. Oh, Pancho likes the food. <laughs> and Pancho have a lot of fun at the dancing, too. See, I saw you dancing with that dark-eyed senorita, Pancho. Oh, you seem to be having a very good time. Oh, a lot of fun, Cisco. Uh, what did the senorita say to you, Chico? Oh, she said Pancho would be a good dancer, just except for, for two things. She said you would be a good dancer except for two things? See. Si. And what did she say those two things were, amigo? Pancho's two feet. Oh, Pancho! Oh, she's... Oh. <laughs> I 
And so ends another exciting adventure with O. Henry's famous Robin Hood of the West, the Cisco Kid. <laughs> Good meals just grow naturally from good butternut bread. Yes, naturally and economically, too. A loaf of this soft, tender bread suggests an almost unlimited number of dishes and meals to serve. And a fine way, too, to stretch your budget. Butternut croutons for soup or salad. Butternut crumbs to make a meatloaf go further and serve more people. Even unexpected company that drops in around 5 or 5.30 and somehow or other stays for dinner. Or even just plain slices of this soft, tender bread served fresh from the wrapper to add flavor and nutrition. Yes, good meals grow naturally from... Tut, tut, nothing but butternut bread. Try it yourself and see. Next time you're shopping, stop and shop for the only loaf of bread you'll see in that blue and white check gingham picture wrapper. That's butternut bread. Good butternut bread. You're sure to enjoy it and to enjoy your meals more because of it. Be sure to listen again for another thrilling adventure of The Cisco Kid. Cisco Kid was played by Jack Mather. Poncho by Mel Blank. That's the Cisco Kid with Night of the Fire, starring Jack Mather and Mel Blanc. Sponsored by Butternut Bread, as originally broadcast April 9th, 1953. Next time on the Film Detective Podcast, Brian Donlevy stars in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense, so don't miss it. To learn more about this series, visit thefilmdetective.com. See you next time. 